Hey, how you doing? I'm back again with another client portal video here. Now, let me explain something to you right off the bat. I have not made a client portal video in this series for about three months now. I've gotten a ton of comments. This is part nine, I believe. I've gotten a ton of comments saying, hey, when are you gonna make another video? We really like this, thank you so much. I wanna say a couple things right off the top. If you don't wanna hear this, skip around in the chapters, okay? The first thing that I wanna say is that I cannot thank you guys enough for the uh, the love on this on this video series and all that. Um, if you're watching this way later, obviously maybe there's more videos and this doesn't matter. But um, to this point, right now, if you're t if we're watch if you're watching this around June of 2024, thank you so much for the support. I greatly appreciate it. Um, can't thank you guys enough. I've been very busy because I started making these videos at a time where I was kind of like just starting my content journey and starting my journey with bricks, and I was also doing different projects for the agency. There's a lot of different things uh, kind of going on here. Uh, thank you guys. I can't thank you enough for all that, but I do want to be honest and transparent. That's the reason that I haven't finished this because I was doing this as a project for myself. I have a portal with built with Elementor and I was trying to use this to, as a project to build a new portal, but my old, old portal isn't really broken. It's just, you know, so there wasn't, it just didn't, that's why there's been a little bit of a lapse here, but here's the thing. I owe it to you guys, I feel like to continue to, to provide content and value in this, in this realm to, to an extent. And I want to, I mean, I want to continue this project, um, but here's what I need from you, okay? What I need from you is that I need you to tell me exactly what you want. And the reason I need you to tell me, to, for you to tell me, the reason I need you to tell me exactly what you want is because at this point, I truly feel that where we're at with the portal right now after this eight or so videos, it's passable. Like you could utilize this for your own self, maybe with like one or two extra tweaks and obviously, I've had people reach out to me that are not building agencies, they're building like other random businesses and they wanna put the portal in that business. So it's not like a one-to-one -one comparison. I need to understand from you guys what you really need, what types of features and types of things like that. Leave them in the comments down below. Be as, as descriptive as possible and I will try to make small videos on those types of things with this series moving forward because I really do feel like we're kind, I could just start showing you random stuff, but it's very difficult because I wanna make sure you guys are getting the value out of it. So that is where I'm at right now. I'm just being completely open and transparent with you guys. There's a, there, there's a ton more features we could add, but I don't really know where to go from here. So um, I'm just leaving it up to you guys. So if you want more of these videos, you let me know by in the comments telling me exactly what you wanna see, uh, and I will do my best to make smaller, digestible videos for the continuation of this series on those types of things. That being said, I do have a couple things that we could talk about in this video because we did kind of leave it on a little bit of a cliffhanger. Uh, there was definitely things that I that I that I can till can still uh, show you here. So why don't we just jump in there and I'll show you some things. Again, everything will be down in the chapters if you want to skip around and see what we talked about in this video. All right. So if you've watched all of the other videos, you know kind of where we're at. We have a client portal. We have a dashboard. We have websites. We have orders. We have all that sort of stuff, right? What we need to do now, or one of the things that we can do now, is I think one of the big things that I've seen. Again, I've gotten a lot of these comments. One of the things is like kind of relationships, right? So if you are running an agency, right, then you'd have websites. These are your websites, basically your projects. And each we talked about these, like each one of these is a different client. And you know, if you log in as a different user, they will only be able to see the certain ones. We talked about all that sort of stuff with the, the queries and everything um, and the conditional logic. Why don't we try to do one, at least one specific thing today? And that one specific thing is, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna think that this is mine anymore. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna think about the layout or anything. I'm not gonna think about um, where exactly I put this. I'm just gonna try to explain this as directly as possible, and then I want you to take it from there. Okay? I want to teach you how to fish, so to speak, and then you can fish for the rest of your life. Okay? It's kind of what I try to do with all the content, but that's what I'm doing. So in my mind, here's what here's what I'm planning. Okay? And again, if you have more specific things, leave them in the comments. You have like websites, which is your main projects in a sense, your main thing that you are servicing. Well, you might have a situation where you also have well, let me, let me, the verbiage is tough, but let's say you have websites, which is the main service that you provide, but then you also have like something that is related to websites, right? So this is, this is the, the thing that you are providing, the actual product, but then there's, in this case with the agency thing, maybe there's projects, right? So each website could have multiple different projects associated with it, and you want to be able to showcase how like like all the projects that are associated with that one website. So let's say that you you built the website and then you know you um, you added like a couple other pages 
at, at like for one for one reason you charged an amount of money for that and then you did something else it's kind of like relating orders in a way so we'll just talk about that relationship and i'll show you kind of how to do that here so here if we edit this website with bricks if we current we're on the websites slash websites page which is an archive the website's archive right if we edit this what we're going to do here is we we can see everything that we've done before here right we can see the admin view we can see the current uh current user view uh, based on all the conditions. Again, watch previous videos. Uh, what we'll do here is we will, we will change this up slightly, okay? You could do it like this, but we're gonna change it up slightly. And I'm gonna do it this way because it's a little easier. Especially if they have multiple websites, you probably want them to go to potentially like a website single, like a, a slash websites slash, uh, you know, website one or company name, whatever. So what we're gonna do is inside of our card here, right? we're going to add another very simplistic thing. So let's expand all these, and then we'll come into our info wrapper. Actually, we'll go to, let's just make it, let's just go to the actions wrapper. Let's duplicate a button, okay? And again, super, we'll say go, we'll say uh, more info, um, it doesn't matter, about this website, okay? It really doesn't matter. I'm not, we're not talking design or anything in here that is outside the scope of this. If you want to learn how to use ACSS and everything like that, I'll try to make more videos, obviously, but go watch Kevin Geary stuff. It's amazing. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, click that. We're going to refresh here. So now for every single one of these, well, actually we have to, we have to go back here for a second because I duplicated a button that has conditions on it and we don't want this to have conditions on it. We're going to get rid of those conditions. We're gonna press save. We're gonna come back over here. We're gonna reload. Now every single one of these, okay? Every single one of these is gonna have more info about this website. So I do see a problem here obviously already and it's the reason that more info about this website up here, it's in these ones like cause I made it in this specific card here but this is a separate grid down here with separate cards. If we're using like templates or components then it would make more sense. Um, but for the time being, we're just not gonna do that. This is, this is just the admin view down at the bottom. You don't need to do that. That's just, that's, that's just, again, in, from that other video, just if you want to see all of them on your front end as the admin. What we're really looking at up here, and maybe I'll do it like this, is I'll say, just so, we, so we're all on the same page here, let me slide this up and go like this and just say like, um, I'll say current, so we're all on the same page, current user view, okay? There we go, okay? Nobody said this was gonna be pretty, all right? So current user view. So this up here, this top section is what the current user would see. Down here is what the admin would see. If you wanna do it like that and then you use dynamic uh, con display conditions and all that sort of stuff in order to uh, switch it up there and uh, only show certain things to certain users based on their user role. You can do that, I showed you how to do that before. All right, so back to the current user view, okay. So if you come in here and you click more info about website, what we're gonna do here is we're going to Click on this button and we're gonna say, where do we want this to go? Well, we want this to go to dynamic data. We don't want this in here anymore. We wanna to go to the post link, post URL, okay. We refresh again. Now, this is going to, if you can see very small at the bottom there, it says websites uh, slash website dash one slash website dash two. Okay, so these are going to the singles. We're on the archive, we're on the website's archive, we're going to the singles. I actually just made in the time that I didn't post videos in the portal, uh, I'll leave a link in the description to my WordPress dynamic data series. If you go to wpdynamicdata.co, you can go straight to the playlist. Uh, it will teach you all about this stuff, okay? I did this because I was creating this series and this is a little more advanced. I wanted something a little more basic and that is definitely it. If you don't know about like singles, archives, um, options, pages, custom post types, I mean, it is the place. I'm really proud of that. Go check it out if you're interested in it. Like I said, link in the description. But anyway, where this is taking us is to the website one single page, okay? So if we come over to templates, now we have to create a new template. So we're gonna create a new template. We're gonna say websites single, there we go, there we go. And we're gonna go over here to select template and we're gonna say single and we're gonna say publish and then edit with bricks. So now we're creating that single that we were talking about, okay? and into section, and again, this isn't gonna be pretty, it's just gonna be uh, just all the, the way that you wanna kinda see here is dynamic data, and we're gonna say post title, so that's gonna say website one or website two or what have you. 
you're creating effectively, again, if you're not familiar with this, I'm going to use some analogies for you. It's like a, think of it as a blog post for that specific website. Like it's a single. So it's like that blog post page that everybody kind of knows at first, but it's a single. Like it's just a single for uh, the websites. I'm going to use a text link here just because that's easiest. I'm going to say our, um, I'm going to grab our, um, our website. Um, what is it called? Is a website link? What do we call this bad boy here? So the domain name, perfect. And then I'm going to say dynamic data. And I'm going to come back down to the bottom. And I think we can just go dynamic data or our domain name, HTTPS colon slash slash. Love, love, love uh, bricks because of that. You can just put the variables, like the dynamic variables, right in anywhere. It's amazing. Okay, and our last thing that we have to do is we have to come up to um, template settings and we have to say conditions. Again, this is the single for all websites. So we have to say post type, we have to say websites, and then it's gonna be on all the websites. Now we'll show you what happens. So if we come back over here and we refresh, we didn't really need to, but then if we come in here and we click more info about websites, now we have website one with the company domain name. That's amazing, right? And we have right here, we have website two, company domain name. So again, depending on the, what the, the concept here is that if you have a, a user, right, like John Doe, and they have many websites, like they've contracted you to build many websites for them, you will have, they will have more than one website associated to their to their user, related to their user, which we already talked about, okay? So we did all that. So you can you can port over more of this information, right? You could port over these buttons if you want. Like you could just put like another, uh, in this single area, you could put like buttons for, you know, downloading proposals and all that sort of stuff if you wish. You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter. We're not, I'm not showing you anything crazy here just yet. The next thing I wanna show you though is, is we can get a little bit more uh, interesting with this. So why don't we just uh, throw a heading in here and we'll just wrap it in a container and we will slide this like this, okay? And now what we have is, let's just go to, um, so like that would be our website, you know, our, our H1, then we have down here H2, let's say projects, okay? So now, just to kind of give you another, another visual, we have just kind of our, our really basic heading up here, and then we're gonna have projects. Well, Mark, now what, what are we talking about here? So website one, is gonna be like, you built the thing, you're charging them for the thing, you wanna try to, if you're like being really, really diligent about it, you wanna try to have like a log, right, of all the stuff that you've done. Now maybe this, I'm gonna be real with you guys, like maybe you don't wanna do this because maybe you have that somewhere else, like in a base camp or in a Notion or something like that. If you do, maybe look into integrations, if you have something specific, maybe I'll try to you know do that too, let me know. But we, what we're doing here is we're doing this all in WordPress. So what that means is that you have to manage the data in WordPress yourself if you're, if you're gonna do that. So what that also means is that like, unless you go over the top with customization and integrations, like you can't like be on your phone and be like, oh, I need to do so-and-so for website one, so let me just like look at a quick task list and like edit it there. It's like, that's not really what's gonna happen. Like you're gonna have to be in a WordPress admin dashboard a, a, like dealing with these projects, which I'm gonna be completely honest with you, is not like the funnest thing to do. It's not really built for that. It's, it's capable of doing it, but it's not like as good as using something like a Notion or a Google Keep or wherever where everything, it's a web app. Like we're not really building a web app here. We're using a CMS to handle these types of things. Good, bad, and different, your call, okay? I've done it before. I've mixed feelings on it, but again, I'm showing you how to do it because maybe you find super value in it, okay? So we, we shall see. What we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to have some projects, right? So project one, project two, we already have some data in here. Let's see what we got. So project one is submitted. You know, it says da da da. So start date, completion date, all that sort of stuff. And it's already connected to like website one in this case. So I know we already kind of talked about this a little bit, but let's talk about it a little deeper now. So with projects here, Projects are just another custom post type, right? So I mean, again, the stuff that we have on the back end, we have projects, we have tasks, we have we have all this sort of stuff, right? So in my mind, okay, change the words if you want. You have a client. That client is associated with websites. That website is associated with projects for that specific websites. And then we could even go down one layer deeper into like tasks, if that's, if that's pertinent. But right now we're just focused on the project thing. So we have these projects, right? project one, project two. 
let's assume that both of those are just related to um, like website one and website two, okay? Now, what we need to do is we need to go to, uh, I'll show you a couple things, but the first thing we'll just make, we'll make this easy. We need to go to the website single and we need to be able to show projects, the, pro the projects that are related to this website, okay? Now again, there are a million ways to display this data, okay? We do not need to, I'm not, I'm not talking about, uh, I'm not going into deep depth on the design of this and the actual uh, build out piece. I want I want you to understand how to query more and how to do that because the design part is like super subjective, okay? So what we need to do is we need to, we'll create a, uh, another heading down here, let's say. And if I had, I don't know if I have frames, I do have frames. We could cheat. We could cheat and just do frames. Um, if you guys are interested in that, um, I'll just show you this way, like really quickly, because it's gonna be super duper quick. Um, don't want, yeah, okay. Actually, probably didn't need to do that. It's gonna mess up my stuff, and then I'm gonna switch this back to global. Okay. So look, um, you don't have to do it this way. Obviously, this is frames, and if you don't have frames, then you know it is what it is. Uh, but I'll show you a different way here in a second, but just so you can kind of get the real idea if you do have frames um, And I'll leave link in the description for ACSS and frames and all that if you if you want to do that, but down here Projects right and then we have a table So this table is automatically just like built in here with frames and everything like that and then we can have a um, Like kind of build like a query basically in here like a this is query loopable so if we come down into body Right, so we have body row, we have data cell one, data cell, data cell, whatever, and we can go into body row, and we can query loop this, and then we can say posts, post. Actually, honestly, we're using Jet Engine here, so like websites to projects is actually probably going to work in this sense, and then in our data cell we have data, and this would be whatever you want. So this would be like um, we need to go down to projects. And we would say, really depends on like how you want to how you want to say it, right? So ima imagine, I mean, literally, you're literally building kind of like a little pseudo task management system in a way. So like post title might be the first thing that you want to put in there, okay? Uh, header row also. Well, we're going back up to this header row, and I'm saying like what what are the things we want to do? We have to come back and kind of look at this. Okay, so look already this is. You got to understand what's going on here, okay? This was so simple with like a table like this. You could just create your own table too. You could create like a little grid. But this is so simple with this. Forget this R team thing here. There's header, 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 header. We can change the names of the header and then the, the actual data in the table is being automatically queried in via the um, via the query, the query loop that we set up within this, within this uh, frames table here, okay? So like project one right is related to website one that's the reason we're seeing project one there if we if we add i'll show you this just i'll, I'll show you this look add project okay project uh for uh, let's just do it like this let's just say like create a new page okay and then we'll say submitted we'll say estimated collision you don't care about any of that and then we'll we'll create we'll click uh connect websites and we'll say website one websites uh publish did I click that? Publish? Yeah, I think. Maybe, I don't know what happened there. Reload. Look at that. Don't worry about the styling again, but look at that. Do you see what happened there? I didn't do anything special. I just already had a query, and that query is already bringing in things that are related. That the projects that are related to this website were on the website page. Bada bang, bada boom. It's that simple. Okay. If you don't want to see the table, if you don't want to see this table situation, um, we can just not do the table situation because I know probably some people don't have frames. Frames cost money. You're probably going to get mad at me. I get it. Okay, so let's let's not do that. Um, let's just go back and delete this table real quick, and then come in here and say projects, and then we'll just say um, I'll duplicate this heading. I will come in. I will say an H3 this time. I will say post title, and I'm starting to build out a card here. So that's going to be a post title. I'm going to wrap this in a block because this is going to be our projects card. I'm also not CSSing here, okay? We're not, it's not really the part of this. That's not really the point of this, okay? And then, or I'm not, um, I'm not BEMing anything here. That's not the point of this. So we have projects card, 
okay? And then our heading is gonna be our post title. And what I'll do here actually though is I will, um, I will just like put like a quick little background on this. Um, there we go. And maybe add some, I'm gonna add a, uh, I'm, add, I'm gonna add padding like this. Actually, no, no, no. Let me just do it like this. Padding, give me a little bit of padding here. Give me a little bit of padding. Padding all around. There we go, okay, cool. All right, so if we come back, we got rid of the table for you guys. We have website one, fantastic. The reason we don't have any more websites is because we didn't, the reason it says website and not projects because we didn't actually do the query loop yet, but we have something there, right? If we come back into our website or our, yeah, our website single here, then we come down here and we say projects card. We're going back to our card now. We're creating a query loop, we're querying. And again, this works sometimes, but if you're doing like more complex queries, you might have to use the Jet Engine Query Builder, might have to do something different. But most of the time, if you're using Jet Engine and Bricks, this ends up working if you're in the right place because these, these Jet Engine relation things will always be here. But if you're doing it right here on this websites to projects, like you're on the websites page, you wanna know the projects, then you can click websites to projects as we set all this up earlier. If you look at the past videos when we talk about relationships, we're just now displaying the relationships that we set up. Bada bang, bada boom, we have create a new page and project one, okay? So these would be the projects that you have associated with this website that you've done all on the back end, okay? Now, the next thing that you might wanna do is you might wanna show some some different things about this or maybe just like an easy, an easy way to do this would be to go and say, um, we'll just throw another text link in here, right here, and we will do a projects card and we'll just say it doesn't really matter we'll just do it like this like this okay this is enough we don't need to do all the styling just there we go spread it yeah something like that's fine um text link and we can say um uh, view project or something if you want just going with what you kind of think would be a normal a normal vibe here and we go post link and then we come back and we look at what our website looks like now. So we have created, so like, again, understand you're at, uh, you know, client, your first client's website, like one of their websites. You see that information, you can see projects, obviously up at the top, maybe you have more information specifically about, about this, this one website. Then you have projects that are associated with this website and you would have create a new page and project one or whatever, okay? And then you press view project. Okay, well, where, that's, where is that gonna take you? Well, that's gonna take you to slash projects slash project one, okay? And then those people, or are, are that, that project rather, that we're gonna have to create another single for projects now, and we're gonna have to see that. Your client is gonna be able to like look at all this stuff and, and be able to um, see exactly what's going on depending on how deep you wanna go. Let's say we go back to um, publish this. I don't know what's going on there. Let me, I don't know what's happening. Oh, I didn't, I didn't do this required field thing, I guess. Ah, there we go. Okay. Let's just do here. Publish. Great. Um, okay. And let's go back to projects and let's say, let's just, let me give you an example. Okay. A real life example. We go to project one and you say, create the website. <laughs> okay. So that's like the first project now. Okay. Something like that. Okay. And then we come back over here and we refresh. Oh, that's not the right place. Uh, let's get rid right of that. Uh, website one, okay. So create the website, right? Like that's like our first project, okay? Um, that's our first project. And we'll get to, last. one of the last things here I'll, I'll talk about too is like you have projects, but maybe some of them are completed, right? So like outstanding projects and archive projects. You may wanna also see that, like depending on how you wanna do this. Right now, we're just talking about like projects that are open. We'll call them open projects too. Um, we'll say open projects or like active projects, okay? And then uh, I'll do another, I'll do this real quick and I'll say um, like completed projects. What is What is going on? Type, thank you. Completed projects, all right? And just real quick, we will do, so here's gonna be an issue. This is gonna be an issue right here, actually. If you wanna do something like this, Bricks really lets you down. 
I'm going to talk about this real quick and then we'll go back and then we'll go back to what I was talking about. Bricks really lets you down right here. And here's why. Because when you go, we don't need this anymore. Get rid of that. When you go up to your projects card, and now we have these two sections, active projects and completed projects, right? So you want to, we need to go to our query. Well, what the hell? There's literally no options to filter this relationship even more. So that's, that's an issue. We are not going to be able to live with that. So what we do need to do is we need to go to Jet Engine Query Builder because the other thing is like there's no really relationship situation in there's no like the problem is there's no way in the bricks this is this is uh, this is actually right here the reason that I like Jet Engine too because I don't know how else I would do this in a different platform okay and people like get angry when things cost money but this is what this is what this gives you the opportunity to do you have three ways kind of what, what we're doing here to qu to query. You can like do the bricks query right here, right? Which is like great for a lot of things. Or you can use a jet engine query builder, which we're going to have to do here in a second. Or you can do the relationships. Well, the problem with doing these preset relationships is when you click websites to projects like we just have, now we don't have anything else. So we can't query off like a meta value to filter these results more, which is what we need to do in order to have active and completed. So that's the first problem. Then, okay, you're like, okay, well, what if we just did it through here? And you just said, instead of instead of posts, and then instead of the, the jet engine like thing that's that's built in there, what if you do projects? Okay, now you're gonna see all the projects. That's not, that's not what you want, because you don't wanna see all the projects. You just wanna see the projects that are associated with the current website. That's another issue, right? So then you're like, well, now I'm screwed. So this is where Jet Engine Query Builder really comes in handy because this is the only way that I know how to do this, okay? So we, you can see we already have some like other queries here, but we'll we'll save this and we'll go build a query real quick, all right? Let's go over to um, Jet Engine and Query Builder. And what is this query called? This query is gonna be called, um, we're, it's, it's called active, we're gonna have to build two queries, active projects for current website active projects for a current website that's fine all right so it's a post and we're gonna we want to query what do we want to query want to query projects what's our post status we should you could say probably any if you never have drafts but publish is probably safer okay and projects and publish okay great well wait a second though okay so so let's go to post we got to go to post and page because post in is how you do the relationship piece of it um, so in here you have to say, uh, related items, and then you have to say websites. Can you see the drop down? Yeah, you can. You have to say websites to projects because that's our relationship. We're going to be on the websites page. We're querying product projects. What to show? We want to show the child object because we want to show projects. And where do we want to do it? We want to do current object ID because we're on the websites page. Okay. We're going to add this query. We're going to save that. We're going to come back over here. We're gonna press reload on this. We're gonna come in here and we have to actually, let's save this and we have to reload this. We have to reload this because we need to get the query. If we come back into projects cards and we come into here, active projects for current website. Okay, now you're gonna, you're gonna see something here in a second. We're gonna save this and we're gonna come back over to here. Now, these look the same and the reason they look the, the reason they look the same is one I haven't changed the query down here but the point is I wanted to get you I wanted to get the query to a point, point where it's like you could have just clicked that one button where it said jet engine relations in the in the bricks query drop down thing or you could have built your own query I built my own query but we have to amend that query further because right now what I'm querying is just all the projects that are associated with this website what we're not querying is all the projects that are associated with the website and active Okay, and how do we do that? Well, that's a great question. Let's go over to projects for a second and take a look at what we got here. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna make an adjustment. Create the website. We're gonna say is completed. Okay, we're gonna say the web. We're gonna say we've already completed the website. So we don't we don't care about that. Like we'll, that will ultimately end up in our completed section of our thing. Okay, all of these other statuses, if it's submitted, in progress, or in review, those are considered active projects because they're not completed. Remember that, okay? So let's, we got one project there that is re, that is related to website one. Let's go over to um, create a new page. 
right? And let's change it to like, just, just for fun, let's say create, create an extra page, right? So the idea here is that we created the website and now um, they submitted a new project to us. That's create an extra page. It's, created, it's related to website one and it is not completed. So this is gonna be our one that's in the active and we're gonna have uh, the create a website already done in the completed. But I'm gonna show you how to do that because right now we can't, we can't do that, all right? So what I'm gonna do to make this uh, easier on myself is I'm gonna say active projects for current website. I know it says active, but that's just a name. We didn't finish that yet. What is that thing currently doing? It's just creating, it's just grabbing all of the projects for the current website that are, that are related to the current website. So I'm gonna make this easy. I'm gonna copy it now because the, up until this point, those queries are the same, okay? And I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna say completed Delete, completed, okay, perfect. Now we have two queries in our in our Jet Engine Query Builder that are the same right now at this moment in time. What do we have to do to make these queries work the way we want to? And one other thing I'm gonna do, so we can just see it when it happens, is I'm gonna come back over to my website single. I'm gonna refresh this. I'm hoping you're like watching this and taking it all in and then going back. I know I'm bouncing around a lot, I'm sorry if, if that's the case, but like I need to show you kind of in real time how to think about these things and then it'll make sense and you won't even have to watch me do it because you'll just understand what's going on. That's my hope anyway. But again, if you have specific questions, leave them down in the, in the comments very specifically and I will make shorter videos on those. Let me come back down to completed projects here, okay? I'm gonna take out this old thing that we had and I'm gonna change this to Jet Engine Query Builder and I'm gonna change the thing to completed projects, okay? So the bottom query down here is completed projects. The top query is active projects. Got it? All right, so if we come back out here, these are gonna remain the same because we have not made the, the change that we need to. So here's the change. For active projects for the current website, we need to do a meta query, all right? And what do we need to query on? Well, we need to, we need to query on the this field right here, this status field, this is the, the magic query right here that we need to like, if you like query it, like filter the, the content even deeper so we know if it's active or not. So we're gonna, we're gonna paste status in there. That's the field name. We're gonna say, is it, what do we wanna do? We wanna equal greater to like, look at all this different stuff you can do, right? So if, if we're dealing with the active projects, okay, then there's a real easy way to do this not equal to what's the value that we that we don't want it to be equal to completed if it is if the status is not equal to completed then it's active and we want to see it and then for uh type down here i'm pretty sure we can just leave it at care because it's just like a it's just words and then we don't even need to deal with this so update okay and then if we come back over here to the completed ones we do the same type of thing we say status and we say compared to, well, if they're completed, we just want it to be equal to completed. Okay, and then we'll just care, and then boom. All right, so understand what we did there. We had a query that was bringing in the, the relationship, the related, all of the related projects, but we wanna filter it out more to active and completed. So we did one meta query that was like anything but completed for active, and the other one was if it's completed, then it's completed. All right, so then we come over here, and we already set up our queries in the builder. So now we have, we already, we already created the website. So now it's in the completed projects. And we are, and then we, we, and now we have to create an extra page as an active project. Bada bang, bada boom. And then the last thing I'll show you regarding this is I will just come over to create an extra page and we'll say, okay, well, it's completed now. And now I, I change it in the back end. So that's how you're gonna have to also kind of like, manage it like you can manage it there you we could build something out on the front end too but like at the at the the bare minimum you have to manage it like a custom post type right like that's how you have to manage your projects if you're doing it this way so i did it back there i changed the status i'm going to reload this and now we have no active projects because they're both completed so there you go right that's that's another relationship another situation there and another cool value add that you can add to your clients so you're able to show them like their website page with their information, everything like that, and then show the active and completed projects that they have going on for that specific website. All right, I tried to keep this one short for you guys and uh, I didn't do a very good job at it. I just, you know, I'm trying to give you as much uh, value as possible while we're, while we're going through this. The last thing I'm gonna do here though real quick is just so you kind of get the idea because like, again, this is not entirely 
the the best setup. I mean, again, I don't care about the design, but like as far as like the user experience, it's it's not it's not like particularly ideal. So one thing like you could possibly do, again, we talked about that table earlier. You could you design however you want, design the card however you want. But in my mind, like a, a task list normally has a title and then it has, you know, like maybe a button like we have to go look at more things or like not a task, but like projects. It's the same concept, but projects are just, uh, you know, a, in my mind, a collection of tasks. So at this level, if it's active and completed, then you might want to have title and then something like, you know, I don't know, maybe a, maybe throw like a basic text into this card here, right? And then that basic text is, you know, if it's inactive, maybe it's the status. Okay, so you'd come in, you'd say status. Maybe that's one. Um, that's the right. No, that's tasks. Uh, status. Uh, status. Project status. Project status. Project status. There you go. And then maybe you have, you know, I'm just giving you ideas. So you have project two. You have in progress. And then maybe you would have. Um, similarly down here in this one in this other card down here and again if you were using these cards in my mind really are not the same um if we're talking about like this line and then this line down here they're not the same because you don't need to have you could have completed down here but that's not really like a great use of of space there because they're all completed like up here you might have in progress submitted whatever but down here you probably don't want that to be completed you probably want that to be something like your um your, because we have a field for like actual completed date, well, we, ha we have a complete, we have an estimated completion date. We could do something more like um, uh, for this, you might be like post modified date because that might be the last time that you actually touched the thing, right? Like you actually edit it. You could also like do something different where you could like maybe programmatically set a field when did you say complete or um, or just like literally press complete and then set the completed date. That's a little more manual. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. But my point is here, like you might want to have like this down here where it's like, okay, this is the title of the task. This is when it was completed. You can go and view the project if you want. We didn't get there yet. Um, and then just as an example, when you bring it back, we get rid of this stuff and you bring it back to um, create, uh, create an extra page. If you can bring it back to submitted, then you come back in here and now you can see up here it just says like submitted or it would say in progress or whatever. So I'm just again trying to give you ideas. There we go. I'm trying to give you guys ideas. I want to keep these videos shorter, more digestible, more specific topics now because they're all part of this whole concept, but I don't want to get too into the weeds and I feel like this one actually did. So <laughs> sorry about that. I uh, hope you learned something in this video again specific questions, leave them in the comments. I will do my best to make subsequent videos on all of this. Uh, a couple of things that I have thinking about next are like I was talking about orders to projects is definitely gonna be a big one because when somebody pays for a project, I want to kind of know. So th we'll, we'll relate those. Um, we'll relate projects to tasks if you want to go that deep. Uh, and then maybe I can show you some workflow stuff. But I'm, again, using you guys as the driver for this type of content. If you're appreciating this, I appreciate you. Let me know what you want to see, and I will do my best to create that for you. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you in the next one.